This video is going to be on pathologic hemolysis. And I have the categories of pathologic hemolysis listed here. I'll go through each one of these categories, starting first with immune-mediated. Immune-mediated can be due to various different etiologies. And most commonly what we see in the dog is something called idiopathic or autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And during this disease, for some unknown reason, antibodies form against the dog's red blood cell. So there's the, the dog's own lymphocytes are making antibodies against the dog's own red blood cells. Alloimmune hemolytic anemia is when antibodies are forming against non-self antigens. So a good example of this would be during a transfusion reaction. If a dog is given red blood cells from another dog, antibodies will develop against those transfused red blood cells and they'll undergo hemolysis. They'll initiate a hemolytic event. Immune-mediated hemolytic anemia can also be secondary to lots of other things, including infections, and I'll talk about infections in the next category. Also, drugs that you're administering the patients. Penicillin is a very good example of this. And then certain types of neoplasias can actually induce autoantibody formation, and a good example of this would be lymphoma. Okay, so now I'm going to go to what we would expect to see on a blood smear with immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. One thing that we can see is red blood cell agglutination. With red blood cell agglutination, the red blood cells are forming grape-like clusters because they're being held together by antibodies. Usually this is IgM because they're able, IgM is a really large antibody and it's able to bridge multiple red blood cells at the same time, but high concentrations of IgG can make this happen too. So now red blood cell agglutination has to be differentiated from something called Rouleau. Rouleau is a coin stacking arrangement or linear arrangement of the red blood cells that is normal in some species like horses, cats, and to a lesser extent dogs. This is not agglutination. This is just a normal finding that happens due to just red cells being attracted to each other. Another thing that we can see on a blood smear with immune-mediated hemolytic anemia is spherocytes. Spherocytes are easiest to detect in a dog, and that's the only species that I would expect you to detect spherocytes in. With spherocyte formation, the red blood cells change from the biconcave ship biconcave disc to a complete sphere. So the red cells look smaller, they look more eosinophilic, they lose their central pallor, and they're completely round. The other thing that we can see on a, ghost, um, on a blood smear is ghost cells. This is when the red blood cells rupture within the blood vessels and the, or, or the cytoplasm is released from the red blood cells and all that's left is a, a membrane devoid of cytoplasm. Now these uh, ghost cells, these membrane fragments, are eventually removed by macrophages, particularly within the spleen. So those are the things that we look for on a blood smear. Grossly, so you doing a physical exam on the patient, you would look for signs of increased bilirubin in blood and in the tissues. So we look for icterus in the tissues, hyperbilirubinemia on a chemistry panel, and orange or more bilirubin in the urine, bilirubinuria. We also look for signs of intravascular hemolysis, so red blood cells releasing hemoglobin into the plasma. We can see hemolysis in the plasma, and if the hemoglobin spills into the urine, then we look for red urine or hemoglobinuria. Okay, so that's it for the immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. Uh, and that's the end of this video. The next video will pick up with infectious causes of hemolysis.